this this morning uh, as we talk about how summer heat is going to affect your air compressed your compressed air system. And presenting today is our air expert, Mickey Bartlett. Uh, Mickey Bartlett has uh, over 50 years experience in compressed air in both selling and designing equipment. And uh, so I'd like to um, thank you everybody for coming and uh, we'll turn it over to Mickey. Well, thank you, Audrey. Um, uh, beat the summer heat. Well, that's a uh, an interesting topic. There's uh, heat, obviously, uh, can do damage to a lot of different pieces of equipment. Certainly, compressed air systems. Uh, and reason you should care about uh, heat is it does tend to degrade oil. It tends to um, uh, have a lot, a lot to do with how much moisture might be downstream in the in the compressed air system, and just uh, overall. Uh, uh, affecting the performance and the uh, and the uh, longevity of your equipment. If we can go to the next slide. Uh, make sure the air compressor is ready for summer. Compress compressors generate a tremendous amount of heat, as you know, about uh, 70 to 70 percent to 80 percent of the uh, compressed. Uh, excuse me, the motor horsepower goes to uh, heat, not compressed air. So there's a lot of heat that's being generated in the compressed air room. Uh, with summertime heat and humidity added, the mix uh, could trouble uh, could be a, a troublesome for you. Uh, again, we need to keep uh, things uh, clean in that compressor room, not only for safety reasons, but for the uh, the operation of the air, air compressed air system. Uh, intake filters is one thing that we have to deal with. Uh, intake filters, as they get dirty, uh, will will create a uh, a vacuum at the intake and that it, a vacuum at the intake will rob us of energy. So uh, as intake filters get dirty, you're gonna be using more energy to compress the same amount of air. So you, uh, you wanna change those filters to save energy. It's not only that, but protect the air compressor. Uh, clean debris from the compressor and the surrounding areas. Uh, watch out for outside pollutants. Well, obviously a clean compressor room is a good compressor room. If you have debris, whether it be uh, dust or grease or whatever it might be on the motor, the coolers and those types of things, you want to uh, make sure that that's clean, not only for uh, the uh, longevity of the machine, but for the uh, uh, ability for that machine or for the compressed air and drying equipment, uh, filters and drying equipment to, uh, to uh, take out the moisture. Go to the next slide. Keep your uh, here's the breathing by cleaning your intake vents. Make sure to keep your intake vents clean, especially if your environment is dirty or dusty. Build up on intake vents will force your compressor to work harder and reduce pressure. As we go along here, by the way, if anybody would like to ask questions, go right ahead. Um, a way to keep your basically your radiator and your compressor clean is to use some uh, type of material at the intake where the air is being drawn into the compressor air cabinet. Uh, if you don't have a cabinet, just something that would uh, go uh, basically around the cooler itself. Uh, furnace filters are great for that purpose. Uh, I've seen people who have made frames and set, set in furnace filter elements into that. I've seen people who have mounted a roll of uh, filtering uh, material and then just kind of torn it off when it gets dirty. Uh, they would mount that on the uh, cabinet and then come down over the, uh, uh, over the compressor inlet for the air, for the, uh, excuse me, for the cooler. Uh, they've also used magnets uh, to hold that, uh, that uh, material in place. So there's many ways you can deal with it, but we don't want to get all sorts of cottonwood, dandelions, things in the springtime that will come in there and uh, and affect the temperature of the compressor. And again, we're still talking about moisture downstream. Uh, your manufacturer has a uh, range of uh, temperatures that the comp compressor can run under. So, uh, typically, that compressed air, um, excuse me, the oil temperature needs to be between 160, sometimes 150 uh, to 180 degrees. Uh, again, that, that's a large range, but uh, your, your 
particular machine uh, manufacturer might have a range that fits within that, uh, that realm. Uh, increased temperature decreases the density of the ambient air. Well, as you know, uh, as air heats, it becomes less dense. Uh, you can prove that by taking a balloon in the wintertime from inside, maybe a helium balloon, and bring it outside and see how it shrinks. So uh, in the summertime, obviously, in warm temperatures, that air expands. Uh, in the wintertime, that air uh, basically condenses. Uh, this means a lower volume air being drawn into the compressor, which is true uh, as far as weight is concerned, uh, making it harder for the compressed air to uh, compressor to uh, compress the volume air it needs to do get up to get up to the pressure that you demand. Uh, early warning signs: uh, shutting down. If your compressor shuts down, uh, there's obviously an issue. Uh, typically shuts down because high temperature, low oil levels, uh, other reasons also. So uh, if you have a shutdown, don't ignore it. Uh, find out the cause. And that's the, uh, it could be anything from basically the cooler being dirty, again, low, uh, low oil levels in the machine, or just a, a fact that the oil has been running for such a long period of time at high temperatures, you've varnished not only the cooler, but the compressor itself. And there's material out there or uh, a product out there, uh, various different manufacturers call it different, uh, have different names for it. But it's, a, it's a, a varnish cleaning solution that will go into your, along with your oil into the machine. And it has to run for a period of time depending on the, uh, the manufacturer and then be drained. And uh, that typically will solve some of your varnishing problems, both in the cooler and in the compressor. Uh, frequent circuit breaker trips. Well, there's something wrong there, obviously. Uh, and uh, we need to find out what the, what the cause of that might be. Uh, again, uh, the motor being overtaxed, uh, maybe too much heat. Uh, it may be coated with the, uh, a, a substance that uh, it can't cool well. So uh, check that out, obviously. Uh, smell of burnt oil. That's a pretty obvious one. Uh, if in fact the oil is burning, it, it now it's lost, lost its lubricity. So you're going to have a problem with, uh, with your air compressor if you continue to run with that burnt oil. Uh, accelerator wear and frequent performance issues. Um, yeah, that goes along with the oil situation also. By the way, uh, oil uh, running at 200 degrees, which is typically, remember, we talked about uh, 150 to 180 degrees being the operating temperatures. Uh, oil that uh, is run at 200 degrees or greater uh, will, will uh, degrade quickly. Uh, for example, oil that runs at 200 degrees on an 8,000 hour oil will now be a 4,000 hour oil. It cuts the oil life in half. And the higher you go, the more uh, decreased life you get. So uh, at 200 degrees, or you wanna keep your machine under 200 degrees for sure, but at 200 degrees, you're gonna have to double your oil changes at least. We'll go on to the next one. Make sure to monitor the temperature of your air compressor. Your manufacturer will specify the acceptable operating range for your air compressor. Excessive heat can cause unnecessary wear and shorten your compressor's life. To prevent overheating, your compressor may have a built-in safety shutdown system. Test this feature regularly to make sure that it is functioning properly. The way you typically would test a shutdown system would be to change the uh, setting on the temperature switch uh, and have it at a lower lower temperature so that you make sure that it is tripping out and and uh, and working properly. Uh, a thermometer in the compressor room is not a bad idea. Uh, as the temperature approaches uh, uh, temperatures above 100 degrees, a significant uh, reduction in oil life and also, uh, again, we'll be talking about moisture downstream, but uh, quality of the air going downstream. Walk around the compressor from time to time, whether it be summer or winter, and check belts, hoses, couplings, and the motor itself. Um, and uh, in, in some cases, uh, uh, if it needs uh, 
to be looked at with respect to high amperage or something like that. It could be the compressor, but it also uh, could be the, the motor. So that's something that you might want to check and do from time to time. Uh, condensing drains. Um, many, many times we get calls from people who say, I got water in my system. What am, where am I getting the water from? Condensate drains need to operate or that condensate that then the drain will go downstream. If you enter liquid water into a refrigerated dryer, for example, it becomes a water chiller. It will no longer take out uh, humidity out of the air. It just cools water. So it's very important to make sure that these drains, both at the compressor, the filters, and the dryer are, are in good working order. Uh, clean the coils on the refrigerator or dryer. People think about the coils on the air compressor, but will tend to not get to the uh, the condenser on the on the refrigerator dryer. Uh, and again, uh, just like everything else, uh, if it should be in a clean environment, uh, not drawing a lot of air across that uh, condensing coil. Um, Confirm that your refrigerator dryer is working properly. Well, you'll know that if water's downstream, obviously, uh, but there are gauges uh, and they, uh, on a lot of dryers or an electronic device that tells you what some of your pressures are. Make sure they're working within the design range of that dryer. Uh, you should find that information in the manual. Uh, check that the fan comes on. Uh, as it states here, fans do come on and off. But uh, if you've noticed that the fan is off for an extended period of time, maybe there's a problem with the fan itself. Uh, be aware that some of the gauges on dryers uh, will get stuck. Uh, obviously, tapping them is one way of seeing whether or not they come back to uh, uh, where they should be. But you should be replacing those. Those gauges that are faulty uh, could get you in trouble down the road. Uh, make sure that Air oil coolers are clean. Uh, that's the most important uh, item as far as keeping the oil temperature in, in the respectable ranges. Uh, and not only that, but the air cooler, which is called the after cooler, takes out 70% of the moisture of the, uh, in the air that would go beyond the compressor. 30% of the moisture is taken out by the refrigerated dryer. So as I mentioned earlier, if, uh, if, that's, uh, if, the, if the air is too warm, uh, the refrigerated dryer is gonna be overloaded and uh, you will have some issues with the having water downstream. Again, the drain is extremely important on the air compressor. That's where 70% of that water is. Uh, take a look at the motor. We talked about that dirt and dust buildup. Uh, that's, that's only understandable. Uh, go to the next slide. A daily walk around your facility and uh, familiarize your sites with the sights and sound uh, can alert you to the leaks that make your compressed air work harder in the summer and winter. And that's true. Uh, not only that, but it's an energy hog. You have the leaks downstream are. Uh, you, should ha you should have a, uh, a program in which you will at least leaks that you can hear you fix. Uh, it takes about seven to eight horsepower at your air compressor to generate one horsepower of compressed air. So these leaks are wasting you not only uh, uh, energy, but they are also uh, making your compressor run at a, at a, uh, at a uh, higher rate, I, for lack of other words, uh, and uh, can affect uh, temperatures at, from time to time. Uh, again, the uh, more air you use, the more heat that's made. Okay. Next slide.
if you would uh, fill out this, if you have some uh, issues that you would like to talk about, obviously uh, you, can, uh, you can ask any questions you would like during this period. Can we go to the next slide, Audrey? Okay, um, that's interesting. Uh, never having an oil uh, in a heat related item, uh, you may have some that you're not aware of. Uh, if again, if we could go to the uh, the drier side and, and give you some information on how you can keep moisture out of your system, that would be uh, uh, maybe you have had some issues with heat in your compressor room. Thank you very much, Mickey. Now, um, we to talk about uh, checking your oil and your oil bypass valve. Uh, yeah, I, I, here, let me get this out of the screen here. Um, summer heat can lower the life expectancy of your oil. We just talked about that. Anything up to 200 degrees can cut that oil a life and a half. Uh, again, we talked about causing heat trains and, and the refrigerated dryers. The older compressor had bypasses around the oil filter. As the filter got dirty, there would be a bypass and you could check the temperatures uh, on the bypass and find out whether the oil is actually being bypassed, uh, the filters. Uh, current compressors typically have an internal bypass, so they can't be checked. Uh, issues with overheating. Overheating oil can cause varnishing that we talked about earlier uh, and components of the entire uh, causing premature wear to the whole system. Again, the uh, Varnasol was a, a name of one of the products that can uh, eliminate varnish if there is varnish buildup and cause you uh, overheat issues. Uh, again, that's uh, in, usually put in along with a, a uh, fill of oil and then uh, removed after so many hours. Systems that are running over 200 degrees, as I told you earlier, will cause the oil to break down prematurely. Uh, make sure your oil is performing properly, proper, take an oil sample, and we have a, a little video on that. Uh, see, here. Hi, Joseph Smith from Fluid Air Dynamics. Uh, we wanted to review the proper procedure for taking an oil sample on your rotary screw air compressor. Uh, initially, run your compressor for a few minutes and bring it up to temperature. Once you've brought the oil up to temperature, that just helps mix all the particulates that may be inside the system in the oil. So you get a true sound sample. Uh, once that's completed, you want to lock and tag out your power source and close your isolation valve on the package. You want to release all your energy that's stored in the system. Once you've completed those tasks, you're ready to take an oil sample. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and remove the oil. And we lost our, our sound here. Bill, take your turkey baster, insert it halfway into the sump so you're about center line and extract your sample. A little bit more so we get a full. There is a full line on your oil sample jar. Be sure it's full to that level. This way the lab has enough oil to do a complete analysis on your oil. Place the cap on. Clean and wipe the residual oil off the sides, and your oil sample kit will come with a label. On this label, you want to identify the model number of the compressor, serial number of the compressor, operating hours of the compressor, and the date that you've took, taken the sample. Once you've completed that, place your label on the oil sample jar, and it's ready to ship off to the lab to have analyzed. Hope that was helpful. Have a great day. Audrey, we have uh, uh, a, uh, a a turkey baster, so to speak, and and the uh, sample could available to anybody that wants it. Is that true? Yes. Usually, you get uh, an oil sampling kit from whoever does your uh, compressed air maintenance. But if you'd like, we certainly can go ahead and send you out uh, an oil sampling kit. 
um, just put your name and address in the chat section and just do a dash oil after your address and we'll go ahead and get one out to you. Okay. Uh, know the life expectancy of your oil. Uh, most oils uh, uh, nowadays are a longer life, but there are 2000 hour oils, which are basically petroleum based. There's a semi-synthetic that's a 4,000 hour oil. And then you have your fully synthetic, which is typically an 8,000 hour oil. Uh, if you go to food grade oil, that could be uh, 6,000 hours. And uh, you would uh, appropriately go on down and the, uh, basically the, the 4,000 becomes now a 3,000 and, uh, and that type of thing. So the end result is you should know the life expectancy of the oil that you have in your air compressor. Uh, whether it is an 8,000 hour oil or something other than that. Um, moisture build buildup inside the air compressor. Usually that's due to running the compressor too cool, not too hot. Uh, especially with these new variable speed air compressors. Uh, if they're running towards the bottom end of their, uh, uh, of their range, let's say 20% load, uh, they run so they're so efficient. They run so cool that they can build up water internally. Uh, the air that comes in condenses inside the machine, and you can tell pretty quickly that you have that issue because oil levels start to rise, not decrease. Uh, and uh, you should uh, obviously take care of that issue uh, right away. Uh, sometimes you would want to put a uh, a higher temperature uh, regulating valve in the machine to make sure it runs a little warmer at the low levels. Uh, and contact your distributor of that manufactured machine and find out what you can do to uh, solve that problem. Uh, excess moisture in the compressed air lines can damage pneumatic tools, valve cylinders, and uh, along with dirt, that does create a problem. If you have steel piping, uh, which is really not recommended any longer, there is rust in that pipe. The rust along with the water is kind of a jeweler's rouge. So I've, over the years, I talked to people, hey, you got compressed air problems, you got water in your airlines. No, I don't have water in my airlines. Oh, how often you're fixing the air tools? Oh, I'm fixing those things about every, you know, three to six months, uh, tearing, taking them apart, same with valves and cylinders. You put an air dryer in there, eliminate that the debris or filter at those locations. And uh, those compressed air, especially quality uh, air tools, Will, uh, will last a long time, along with all your cylinders and valves. Uh, many production processes are highly sensitive, you know, labs, things like that, that would be extremely sensitive for moisture and oil. Uh, oil can be removed by a 0.01 micron uh, filtration, coalescing filter. It typically takes uh, the oil PPM down to 0.008, and there are some extremely efficient ones that will add another zero to that. So uh, if you're looking to get rid of oil or have a problem with oil or even uh, even uh, oil vapor, which can be taken out by a charcoal filter, uh, you should contact uh, uh, your compressor uh, manufacturer or your distributor or contact us. Uh, we can help you through that problem. Uh, most people aren't aware of this, uh, at least I find out when I go out and uh, talking to people about compressors, uh, a lot of people will have a, uh, let's say a 250 horsepower, 250 CFM air compressor, but they have a 250 CFM dryer. Well, a 250 CFM dryer typically is too small for a 250 CFM air compressor. As you can see in this chart, uh, most all, all dryer manufacturers, excuse me, all dryer manufacturers are under the same uh, they, they rate their, their machines under the same conditions. That's 100 pounds pressure, 100 degree ambient temperature, and 100 degree inlet temperature to the dryer. Now, all those temperatures are important, but the one that affects you the most is the inlet air temperature of the dryer. That means that as higher it goes, the more dryer, more the dryer has to work. For every 20 degrees rise in temperature is twice the moisture level. So you wanna make sure that that dryer is not overloaded. As you can see in this correction factor, 
uh, air inlet, uh, the four, third one down, it says a correction factor for inlet air temperatures. As you can see that at 100, at 100 degrees inlet, uh, you don't have any correction to make. But as you go up to 120, that 100 CFM dryer is now only a 75 CFM dryer. At 120, that 100 CFM dryer is now only a 60 CFM dryer. So it's very important to watch that inlet temperature. Uh, and sometimes you kind of feel it with your hand. Uh, maybe if you have a heat gun, you can take a look at it from that, that, uh, that perspective. But uh, I think it's a, it's a lot of machines are undersized. People wonder why they have problems in the summertime. As heat rises, so does that inlet temperature rise. And so does the moisture content that's going downstream if the dryer is not properly sized. Next slide. Drains. Uh, there are a number of drains. There are solenoid operated drains. There are uh, float drains. Uh, the float drains typically need to be uh, looked at uh, often because they can stick. And uh, if they do stick, obviously water uh, uh, is not drained and goes downstream to the dryer, as I said earlier, where it will chill that water. Uh, other types of drains are no air loss drains. Uh, some of them are electric, some of them are, uh, are magnetic. Uh, there's all sorts of drains out there. But uh, you wanna make sure that whatever drain you have, that you are, that is actually removing the water from the system, uh, or you're gonna have uh, issues with water going downstream. We have another uh, quick poll here. Yeah, you know, just the type of um, here we go. just the type of equipment that you have: um, a rotary screw, fixed speed, a rotary screw, variable speed, uh, piston reciprocal, other, or you don't really know. If you want to just take a few seconds and go ahead and uh, let's look and see what um, we have here. I don't think we're seeing the poll on the screen, Audrey. Okay. results okay so are you seeing the results okay. yes we're seeing the results okay great so it looks like okay. uh, a lot of you have the variable speed and that's that's great uh, for those who don't know what variable speed compressors are and close this out now um, they the motor changes speeds as the compressor needs more or less air the efficiencies of those machines are, they're so great that the power companies love to throw money at you just to change your compressors out. Um, the variable speed machines can save you, oh, 30% of your power costs. Uh, it depends, I mean, we've seen situations where it's been 50%, but uh, the end result, uh, you could get a study done by typically your power company uh, on a rotary screw compressor and, uh, and find out whether or not uh, a variable speed compressor would, uh, would, uh, would uh, uh, you could get a rebate on it or it would save you uh, a given amount of energy. Uh, again, the power companies have, uh, for example, fluid air here. Uh, we are authorized to do uh, those types of surveys uh, in Chicago, in Milwaukee, in Minneapolis. So if you have uh, anything uh, that you have in that area or any compressors you may have in that area, you got question marks about, we can steer you to the right people. Uh, those people that are in other areas, I would check at your power company. Uh, there are extensive rebates out uh, for compressed air. Uh, compressed air is usually, or the motor in the compressor is usually one of the largest motors in the plant. And if you can save energy on that motor, it's significant over the time. Uh, those of you who have piston air compressors, um, basically those start and stop. And uh, some of the stuff, everything I've been talking about so far has been about rotary screw compressors. Uh, the advantage of rotary screws over pistons is that uh, they, their life expectancy is double, triple, especially if you're running the compressor at its, at its uh, full load for extended periods of time. Usually piston compressors are 50% uh, 
uh, usage compressors, meaning as far as the uh, time it should be on versus the time it should be off, it should be off at least 50% or you're going to see excessive wear and in the long run not be able to, uh, the machine will need repair uh, valves and, and cylinders and that type of thing. Uh, rotary screw compressors can run 24 hours a day, seven days a week for extended periods of time and not have a wor worry about uh, overheating or, or wearing out any valves or cylinders. Uh, the compressors are extre extremely robust and, uh, and are also very, very quiet. So if a, there's a noise issue with the piston machine, you might want to look into a variable speed. Great. Thanks for that uh, information on the different type of compressors that are out there, Mickey. Yeah. Um, easy steps to keep your compressor running properly. Uh, obviously, summer can be higher in your compressed air system. Uh, there are steps you would take and obviously keeping your compressor room as clean as possible. It doesn't have to be pristine, but it, it needs to not have uh, barrels up against the intake of the machine or some, uh, some stuff stacked, stacked in front of the coolers. Uh, you, you need to have that compressor. It needs to be able to breathe in order to last for a long time. And also keep that, again, keep that moisture out of your system going downstream. Great. Thanks so much. And so, um, you know, if you would like to receive a, a free compressor room thermometer, uh, just make sure you enter your name and address in the chat box and put a dash thermometer after your address, and we'll go ahead and send you one of those out. It's a great tool to have in your room uh, just to monitor the pressure, make sure it's not getting, uh, monitor temperature, make sure it's not getting too high. Okay, are there any uh, questions that um, you would uh, want to ask Mickey? Um, okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. It looks like we don't have any additional questions. Um, so we do appreciate you uh, taking your time today. And uh, we do appreciate Mickey um, sharing his expertise over the um, past 50 something years of uh, his time.